plate. So my idea this week is we'll stay in the in, in functions. Uh, and again, in things that we're going to reason um, for functions, of course, is to break our programs into individual parts where each function uh, should do something specific rather than cramming everything into a main, okay? So it's easier to debug that way because we can build it part by part. It's also more reusable that way, more understandable. Um, and like I said, we can debug, we can write part of it and then uh, make sure that part runs. If that part runs, we should be able to set it aside and then uh, move on to another uh, another part of it. Okay. And again, we call the functions from wherever we want. We can call a function from inside the main. We can call a function from inside another function. Uh, sometimes you'll hear uh, people call different names. You know, you'll hear procedures. You'll hear uh, methods. Uh, but in reality, most of the time, a function is something that returns a value. But the, I kind of go with the idea that if, like, uh, if it doesn't return anything, it's a method. In my book, um, functions return usually return one thing. But I'm old, old school. Uh, there are functions nowadays that return more than one thing. So I, I just thought we'd stay in this chapter another week, write a few more programs that we're breaking down into. Uh, and we're really in no hurry. As if you've noticed, we're moving through the book pretty quick. It's not a big book. So Doug's gonna have to scramble for, uh, to keep us at 16 lessons. We got midterm right around the corner. Uh, as I stated before, we probably, unless you guys, I don't know, I don't plan on having a midterm. Uh, it'll just be a normal week of programming, uh, getting your programs in. Uh, it's imperative, you know. Again, it's a point game in my book. The more points you have, the better your grade's gonna be. If you don't turn stuff in, of course, your points are gonna uh, suffer. Any questions, complaints, compliments, anything? I like the background. You like the sponge. I live in a pineapple under the sea. Yeah. Like I said, I've never seen that show. It was a little after my, I would think my grandkids probably know, you know, watched it quite a bit. You've never seen the show? No. Dude, I'm almost 70 years old. I don't watch SpongeBob <laughs> SquarePants. Well, the funny thing is, if you're, you know, if you're the right age, it, it, was good as a kid, but then yeah. also there's kind of jokes for adults too. So okay, I I know what it is. I mean, I just have never watched it. I and there's a lot of shows I haven't. You know, people say, "Oh, you ever watched the uh, my or generation after mine?" I guess big thing is The Office, right? So, and I've never watched The Office. I, I have to say that. So, and everybody just raves about The Office. Carell, Steve Carell, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I'm pretty eclectic when I watch stuff. I just, I watch a lot of home improvement stuff, which is kind of scary. There's one on, if you have Amazon Prime, or let's see, is it Prime? Oh, no, it's under uh, Peacock, has this thing called uh, Escape to the Chateau where these, this husband and wife buy this castle in France. And when they buy it, there's like no plumbing, no uh, heat, whatever. And they've got two kids and they, they buy this thing for, I don't know, it's 11 acres and seven outbuildings and a castle for like, oh, I think it's under $400,000 US money. And uh, they're gonna turn it into this wedding where you, uh, People have uh, weddings and stuff like that, but they also live in the thing. So that's pretty interesting. And they're just goofy. He's he's like 20 years older than she is. And 
She's just a hoot and he just keeps nodding his head as she's telling him what to do. Anyway, so let's write, uh, let, I'm gonna go ahead, I started recording. I'm gonna go ahead and share uh, my Thawney with you. All right, can you guys see Thawney? Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm going to say file new. And uh, let's save this before we get going here. And uh, how about acne physics? I'm going to save mine on my desktop for for now anyway. Okay. And so my idea on this one or my requirement on this one to you guys is that not only my Acme physics Python file is going to be nothing more than a menu in reality. Okay, this program is going to do two things. It's either going to calculate if you choose one, it's going to tell you the falling distance of something. And uh, the other one is going to return the kinetic energy of something else, which again, you know, I'm not a physics guy, I just took the formulas out of the book. But you could convert this easily into a uh, geometry program, okay? And if the person selects circles, it does circles. If they select rectangles, it does rectangles. If they select triangles, it does triangles. So all, but all those would be separate functions kept in separate files. Instead of putting them all, what I'm gonna do on this one is you're gonna have three different files. So when you submit it to me for grading, I need you to zip all three of them into a single folder, okay? Put them all in a folder, then just right click, and then it's send to compress. And then that'll put them in a zip folder. And then you, you put those in your portfolio. I think uh, Miss Baird is doing it all the time. She always zips hers. Okay. So, um, Christiana, right? So I need all your files. I can't grade it if I don't have all three of them. Okay. So let's start here. So the program or project, it does, you use project, I use half the time I use project, half the time I put program. So we'll just say the Acme physics program. And uh, file name for this is the Acme physics. Yikes, physics dot pi, day's date. It's going by fast, isn't it? February, beautiful day. Did manage to walk the dog somewhere in there. The only problem right now is my dogs come home and they're just covered, they're under, under carriages are full of slush and mud and salt <laughs> okay so this is a program that will have two options for the user the first is to calculate falling distance of An object, and the second is to calculate kinetic energy. I'll stop it. I think that'll work. And let's see here. 
So again, there's my uh, that. So there's an option here. We could all of a sudden here. Now, you have to make sure you might want to go right now and go down and create a folder somewhere that you're going to save this stuff in. Okay. Because I'm going to say, we could do this. We could say, I'm just saving all three of my files to my desktop, and then I'll just drag them and put them in a folder. So that's an option too. But I'm going to go ahead and say, File New. And I'm going to just call this, I'm going to save this one as, um, oh, I just still make it uh, falling down or falling speed, how's that? Okay. And then I'm gonna make one more. And I'm gonna put, make it, save it as kinetic. So now I have three different, I got, so make sure you're in the right one when we go to type. This one, this one, and this one. And the only reason I created those already is because I'm going to go ahead right now and import falling speed. You don't need the, um, the extension. And I'm going to go ahead and import kinetic. So now if I put those in the same file, they can see each other, okay? They can see each other. And that's important. If I don't put them in the same file, then I have a problem. Again, since we're writing this along, I'm not gonna worry too much. Uh, in the next chapter uh, is on file handling. Um, more so for we want to save up to this point, we can't save stuff or write to a file. But um, in a week or so, we're going to do that. And then we'll want to check whether or not that file exists. Or are we creating that file? Are we writing to the file? Are we reading from the file? Are we appending to the file? But this we're assuring ourselves uh, as the writers of the program, that those those two files are available. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Okay, now I'm going to create three different um, constants, and we'll just make falling choice one. We'll say energy choice is assigned to, and then the quit choice is going to be sign three. I debated whether or not to make that zero, but then I just said, eh, I'll just make it like that. All right, and then we'll define our main, and of course it's like that, and then the colon here, and then we can go down some. Oh, this thing's in our way, go away. Uh, go down a few lines here and uh, pop our main in. And call the main. Do, do, do. Saving every once in a while. I wonder if this thing would run right now. It should just run and not do anything. Oh, here, popping up over here. Oh, unused bad indentation. How can that be bad indentation? Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there, it is bad indentation. There we go. Uh, line 25. What do I got down there? Oh, 
because there's nothing in there and that's fine. Right, because it says it's yeah. expecting a block. It's just nothing no there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If I took this out, it'd probably run fine. All right, I think that works. All right, so let's go ahead here. We're going to say choice is equal to zero. So we initialized the variable there. And then we'll say uh, while choice is not equal to quit choice. And we'll display a menu. So let's go down here and define a menu. And it's pretty simplistic. I'm going to make it uh, print something like, oh, that's too many. And let's just go with one. Right. Let's run this out for a minute here. Let's see if this will work. Get rid of that for a minute. And see if it'll just this whoops. Try and spell it right, Doug, too. See if I can display it just. I don't like that. Display menu, display menu is not defined. Okay. Oh, I just put you have menu. Did return something? No, I just didn't put display. I just okay. had it. I should have had a verb there. Okay, now let's see what happens. There we go. So it displays a nice little menu, which is exactly what we want. All right. I'll tab that back in, one tab. Put my while back in. So I have this in a loop now. And let's see here, display menu. And then we're gonna have choice. will be equal to an int parentheses input and then enter your choice.
Oops. Missing a noise tell when you make a mistake. That's what I like about Thawney. Okay, now we need a big if statement. So if choice is equal to falling, oops, falling choice. Um, for right now, I'm just gonna say rent uh, falling. Else, if choice is equal to energy choice, and energy is here. Else, if choice is equal to quit choice. And then print goodbye. Thanks. Okay, like that. And then else print only one, two, or three are valid choices. Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, so now let's go ahead and check that making sure it works. So if I type in one, it says falling is here, two, energy is here, three, goodbye. Okay, run it again, type in a five, and it says only one, two, or three are valid choices. So I kind of like that three to quit, boom, gone. Give you a second to catch up there. Now, you might notice something here, and this is not in this chapter. If I type in the letter A, my program crashes. Okay, not good, right? That is not what we want. The problem is, is because of right here, right? So that's a problem for us. So, because I can't store um, choice as an int and I can't store the letter A, B, whatever, or punctuation or 2.2 or whatever. So what I'm gonna do here is underneath display menu, I am gonna put in a try 
And then I'm going to take everything I've typed below that down to the display menu. And I am going to tab it in one tab. Okay. I should get rid of this line here, though. Is that right? Lined up. Okay. So now I got to try there. And da 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 else there. I'm gonna put another print here. I'll give you some more. Move over. Okay. I'm gonna add print. Um about invalid selection here. Okay, got that. And then I'm actually also going to put a print underneath this just, I could put a slash n after choices there, but it's just as easy for me to do that. Now I am going to do this and go outside and put my exception in. And I can print the air and then say, Print uh, one, two, one, three are valid inputs to this menu. And I'll put a print after that. And I think that will help my loop. So let's try that. Should you save on it? Okay, so if I type the letter A now, it says invalid literal for int with base of 10, only one, two or three are valid inputs for this menu. So I like that. If I type in a zero, says only one, two, or three are valid choices. If I go ahead and type my one, it says falling is here, two, and three exits my program. So I think we're good. Anybody having trouble with this yet? Are you good? Uh, I'm good. Uh, what do you know? So my meeting's been moved up to five. Just so you know. Oh, cool. I'll be leaving. Sorry. Oh, you're. Oh, you had the five thirty meeting, right? Yeah, but moved it up to five. So okay. if I leave, that's what's going on. Uh, you'll be pretty far along before then. So yeah, no worries. Thank you. Okay, so here's our main, and it's call. We have where it's okay. So it's all stubbed in what I call stubbed in, all right? But now we're gonna write programs or our functions over here in these uh, separate um, files. So let's jump to, oh, I guess this one, falling speed first, okay? 
Oh, I'm going to go back here. Hang on a second. And copy this up at the top so I don't have to copy or so it's just I'm just I highlighted it, control C, jump over here, control V, whoops, control V, and then this will be uh falling speed. And this will be Something like that. And I'm going to define gravity here is equal to 9.8. And define a function called fall. Or maybe, I don't know what should I say, calc fall. I like that better. All right. Uh, we got a love it here. Local variable called uh, distance. And we'll set that to 0, 0.0 at this point. All right. And so basically, this is going to print out a, a, a list of falling speeds, OK? Um, depending on a, a four next loop that we're going to implement. And then it just calls calculate energy. Uh, in another uh, definition and then brings it back in and uh, prints out our loop. So let's print this. We're going to say print um, time and then uh, slash T for a tab, right? And then falling distance. That'll work. And then we'll print a nice little line underneath it. Oh, I don't know how far about that, I think would be good. All right. And then we're going to put in a loop based on time. Seconds. So I'll have four time in the range. And we're just going to make it like one through 10. So that should work. The distance will be equal to. Um, I'm going to call a function called falling distance. Oops. And send down the time, which is just being uh, done by the loop the number one second, two second, three seconds, four seconds, etc. So now that I have that, I probably should go down here. And put in my define falling distance. And again, it's sending 
See where it's sending an argument here? So I have to catch it down here. Okay. And I can call it time. I can call it anything I want in reality. It wouldn't have to be time. And I can have fall distance is assigned my gravity times my time times my time again because it doesn't uh why does it have times my time my time it should be can i do a uh what is it again what's exponent is it uh it's two asterisks yeah Oh, two aster, that's right. Two. Would it be this? So yeah, it's like a one right next two to each row. other. I'm trying to think what it's time times time. So time squared would be what? This? Mm, no. No, that's gravity to the second. You just need to do time times time. Yeah. It's much easier, isn't it? And then we're gonna... Gravity times parentheses times and then the two asterisks two. Yeah, I could. Okay. But it's just as easy to do it this way, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's not really saving you anything. So. No and then return this back to up above. So return our fall distance. So there it sends it down here, sends time down here, calculates it out, and then it returns it back to be put in distance here. Okay, so now we just have to print it out each time. So we wanna print time comma and then uh you know again i could do my uh percent sign thing going uh, but it's, i'm just gonna go ahead and do it this way on this one in other words you could format it like we've been doing with the percent um and we'll do this format distance to two. That'll work like that. So calculate fall. Da 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 da. Down here. All right, blah, 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 blah. So just basically our math is what we're doing here. So we need to just remember that this is calculate fall here, okay? Calculate fall and our thing is falling speed. So over here, we're gonna say, Right here, we're gonna say falling speed, was it? Dot, uh, calculate fall. And then we'll take this line, this out of here and just put a print in there like that, they need to check falling speed and then we call it calc fall, that's right, save it, make sure you save it. And let's go back over here and let's see if it crashes like a big bomb. If I type a one, there you go. Of 
course, I'm sure that's in a vacuum or whatever. All right. And our menu comes back up. We type a three and boom, our program stops. Okay, so this is what I have here. I'm gonna put another print in here so that isn't right up against our, when it runs. Anybody got one that isn't running? Me. Um, it says no. I mean, I'm, I'm looking. It's probably just a little typo, but it says module not found error. No module named falling speed. And it has. You got falling app. speed. It should be falling speed dot calc underscore fall. Correct. That, that's what I have. Okay. Um, but it says named falling speed. F capitalized, S capitalized. My file for falling speed is camel case. I have it camel case in my main. Okay. Let me double check. And it can't find it? Did you save it? Uh, it says module folder? not found error. Okay, that means it's not in the same folder. Yeah, my, when I Usually. saved mine, it saved in a different folder, so I had to like move them all in the same folder. Right. I I saved them. Let me double check that. But double check and make sure they're in the it. same one, because that's usually the problem. And mine did the same thing when I first wrote it. Unused, and then I have a. Is my mic still on? Yes. Okay. Uh, line unused import falling speed, unused import kinetic you imported those into your main yeah do i need to do the same for the other two files these were what i called mine right um so you have to have it up here no i mean over here no you're not importing anything into them right because they're all now connected yeah, falling speed and kinetic are acting as classes to. Yes, exactly. They are classes that to this. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Usually, well, this is either a spelling error, or yeah, I know that's the or, thing. I'm find or it it's in, or they're just not in the same folder. For some yeah. reason, today when I wrote mine earlier today, uh, it put it in like. I don't, I forget even where, wherever the last place I was in my, uh, in my file explorer. Right. Yeah. When I, when I made all those files, you were saying that. So I specifically made a file called Acme physics and put all three files in that file. Um, and they're in there now. Yes. Uh, let me look, let me spend a couple minutes looking for the typo. All right. Anybody else? Got one that isn't running. Mine seems to be running. The only, the only problem I had was earlier where it saved in the wrong folder. That's about it. So do falling speed and kinetic need to be capitalized? If, if you have them capitalized here, they have to be. Gotcha. You, okay. So you in your, if, them, it's case sensitive. Right. So whatever you saved them at, it has to match here. Gotcha. I thought, okay, when we were calling it in the try, like if choice equals falling choice, the menu, I yeah. thought that was using falling speed was the file name, but it's actually the import name. So I think that's the issue. Yeah. But your import name has to match your, I mean, it, uh, 
we just haven't gotten to where you could change it, but it should because that's what it's looking for. So these, this and this and the name that you saved it as should all be the same. Oops. I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah, right now my file names are camel cased while the import name, uh, it, they're both capitalized, right? So yeah. those all need to be consistent. So just change this to camel case then. Okay, got it. And try it. better uh now it says i've got an issue with my line 18 choice equals zero so what does it say about it it says python doesn't know how to read my code i'm You got a semicolon after you define main or a yeah. colon. Syntax error, invalid syntax. Let's see. It says four time in range 111. Let me see what I did wrong there. I... Four time in range 1 to 11. Yeah. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Here, I can go there. Or I can share my screen for a moment. Okay. Hang on, let me. Here's an exercise for everybody. <laughs> Hang on, I got to turn you on. There you go. Well, I, I think I saw it. Uh, after four time in range, there's uh, yeah, you need a call in there. Colon. There you go. Make sure you save it. And then go back to your main and run your main. Whoop, you shut us off. Uh, it started working. Oh. Oh, all right. Cool. Okay, let me get my money. All right, so that, that's our, our one. We're going to go back over here now. So now we're looking for our energy one, right? So uh, our kinetic one. So I'm going to go over to kinetic. And um, let's see what I got in my paste right now. Look at that. And this file is called kinetic. And then this is, it is really a class. That uh, calculates kinetic energy based on the mass and velocity of uh, based on users input of mass and velocity. All right, so I got some more. Uh, so this will be, let's just call it divine calc, calculate energy. And I think I'll have a couple variables.
one for mass. And I want it as a double, so I'll put that or floating point. And I want one for velocity, same thing. And one for the actual kinetic. I'll let you go ahead and use Ke for kinetic energy. We'll just say it's a physics program or whatever. So Ke would be an appropriate uh, um, yeah. variable name. OK, so now we're going to have, so we'll just do mass is equal to a float. Oops. Input. Then enter the mass of the object in kilograms. And then we can do the same thing with velocity. Will be a float. Oh, excuse me, there goes the fire department. You guys really think I live at the fire department, don't you? <laughs> Velocity in meters per second, I think it is. Something like that. And then we'll uh, define, oops, I forgot. That would have been a bad error, DEF there. And we'll send down the mass and velocity when we get to it. I think it's just tabbed over. I think there's already a def there. Oh. Whoa. Uh-oh. Yeah, my mom. Oh, no, don't. Oh, no. <laughs> there. Okay. There is a def up there. So now I've got a def def. And this needs to be tabbed back. Start scrolling here. The pro what it is, is I, I'm sitting here, I have a, a laptop desk and there's only a certain amount of room and my laptop has a numeric keyboard. So if I move my mouse enough to one side, it presses down my uh, numeric keyboard. So it prints a bunch of zeros. Okay. So we got that, got that. Let's see, K. Okay. I can do another K here, local variable. So these two KEs are different. And so this KE is going to be equal to my mass times my velocity times there's the fire department telling me that what the problem is and then divided by two here. And we'll return that up to the function above. Now that I have that, I can call it. So I'll say up here, I'll just say KE. This is the other KE, kinetic energy. And then mass and velocity. And that 
that should float there, duh, there, that, there. All right. Okay. So now I can, I think, let's see, I'm going to call calc energy. Okay. So this one here should be nothing more than kinetic dot calculate energy and then I'll get rid of this here oops and let's see if I break it so put in a two. Module kinetic has no attribute to calculate energy. What did I call it? Calc underscore energy. Oh, I think it's because uh, velocity is, doesn't have the equals. It's just a hyphen. Maybe. What did I do? Uh, in the kinetic class, um, the variable velocity in the calc energy is uh, it doesn't have the equals. It just has a hyphen when it says when it gets the user's input. Oh, geez. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, so let's save that. Go back here, run it again. All right, so now we'll go with two. And under the mass of it, we'll just make it 10 and 10. And I think that should come out to about 500. Whoop, we didn't print it. <laughs> I need to print it. Let's see here. Turn it. Oh, yeah, I might want to do that. Go back over to kinetic. I go ahead and calculate it there. I better print it out. So print, at least it didn't crash, I know that. Kinetic energy is format KE as uh, 0.2F, should be good. And that, and then that, and then we'll put a joules is what it's in, if we did it correctly. I think that should be better. Let's see what we get this time. Well, what happened there? Oh, I'm in the wrong. All right. There we go. So do kinetic energy, 10, 10. There you go, 500 joules. I do my check my one again. That prints out nicely. And then if I type the letter A, it says that's not right. And then if I type a five, it says that's not right. And if I do a three, it quits the program. And so I think we have a nice little program there. Now, um, I know somebody had to leave. Ding day. Okay, the only problem I see right now is right here. So again, if I go here, run the program. Let me clear this. And I type in two, and I type the letter A. Oh, that's interesting.
Huh. Let's try it again. Two. That's in kilograms. I'm surprised that it's catching that air. And it works fine. Let's see if it catches the second one, too. Okay, so if I do a two and I type uh, 10 here and an A here, it's not the best uh, air thing, but it's not bad. If we change the second line um, in the program right here, So that, so down here in this one, it prints out the air. You know, I'm gonna make it look nicer though. Something like that. And uh, And let's see what happens now when we do it. So if I chose two, comes up and asks me how many kilograms, or kilograms. I like that, could not convert string to a float. Only numbers are allowed as entries and it kicks us back into the menu. So that's pretty cool that we don't have to error, uh, air check our uh, kinetic because it's being picked up by our menu or our selection over here when it tries to calculate these up here. I thought we were gonna have to come over here and put in another loop for our try catch or try exempt here. Okay, anybody have a problem yet? Are we having a, oh, somebody else going or? No, or do I, do you need me to scroll somewhere or? I'm having a strange, it's printing out the, the velocity table when I start the program and I'm not sure why. Okay, let's go over here. You mean the falling one? Yes. When you start the program. Yeah, before I even input anything into the menu. Okay, well, let's take a look. I'll uh, stop sharing and then you should be able to share. Should be a green button. Hello? It's a uh, computer wants me to allow it real quick. Well, allow it. <laughs> All right. So why is it jumping over your display menu? Go over because you're go over to your physics. Click on your oh, you are in your physics. Uh, scroll up so we can see. All right, stop. Blah 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 blah. blah. Okay. Um, run it for us once. Let's just see what it does. Huh. Well, that's kind of silly, huh? You broke it. <laughs> it's broken. Scroll down a little bit. Stop. So 
So it comes in. Well, choice is not equal to that. Displays your menu. So then it jumps down here, does that. Is your main farther down yet? Okay. That's all I wanted to see. Jumps down here. And that should displays it and then goes into the try for your choice. But why is it calling if falling choice? Uh, let us, can you scroll to the top, please, once? Okay, falling choice is one, energy two, quit three. I don't see anything wrong there. Falling speed, calculate fall. Da, da, da. And he's got his colon on the end. Choice. Anybody jump in anytime if you see what uh, something we're not. I'm not seeing. Uh, I'm not seeing any errors on the this this one. I, uh, I honestly don't know why. Why would it be printing them? Yeah, that's what I don't understand. <laughs> jump over to your falling speed one. I just can't think why that would code ends here. There's no main here or anything. Calculate fall. Jeez, Louise. Fall distance here. Okay, go back to your physics. speed dot calculate fall hmm. why is there that just jumping right over your choice or something right that's bizarre I wonder if anything will happen if I change these to uh, if statements. Well, but that you don't want that because it, it, it slows your program. Try it once, but it slows your program down, right? Because yeah. uh, it, let's say it is the first one, then it still has to go and check every one of them. Whereas if, if it is number one, then it doesn't even read do the comparisons for anything else. But go ahead and make a MIFS. All right. And see if it, what it runs like. Oh, it's still doing it. Yeah, that's, that's very weird. Something that I like about Thani though, um, there's that little bug up in the top that oh, if, yeah. uh, if you press it and you, pr um, you can press F6, I think it is, or is it F7? And, it'll and it goes through. through. It. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Import kinetic. So maybe Oh, I, jump to kinetic. Do I call did I call the function here somewhere? I don't see where I would have called that. No, go to kinetic. It's saying oh, it's kinetic, not. But why would kinetic interfere with I didn't call in here either. No. It's not that I know. Huh. Go back, uh, go back to your main one, yeah. Oh, okay, now hit up. Oh, okay, so now you're just stepping through it, but it's already printed it. Why is that? No, it's not your kinetic, it's something in the physics one. Scroll down, let me see one more time here. Keep going, keep going, keep going, main. Is there anything below your main? No, I can't, I can't scroll any more than that. Okay, so your main comes here, it's the main. Go on up, define main is right there. Okay, hit F6 again or whatever. Oh. 
That's interesting. I don't even know what it did there. That's, I just don't see the air. This is one of those you hate, right? It says line 11. In falling speed. Line 11. It's a comet. Yeah, that's not. Well, years are divided by the school in weeks. They expect a falling speed slash physics stop high. Okay, so falling speed line 11. Yeah, there's nothing there. Calculate fall. Why is it jumping to that right out of the box? Could it be that the file I put them in has a similar name to the uh, might modules or classes? Might I don't know. Can you change the name? Go ahead and change the name of the the folder once, and let's see what happens. I might. Uh... That's kind of bizarre. Oh, I see it. Because if the folder is named Falling Speed, it, that might be why. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. This is new to me. Yeah. You wouldn't think it look in the... Is it looking in the folder in the first file it comes to? It's going in there and doing what it says. Huh? It's the only thing I can think of. I have to close it because I changed the name of the file. That's all right. Go ahead. Save. What? Okay, didn't actually close it. So change the name of the go up. Change the name of your folder. I'm helpless here because you're on a Mac. <laughs> Couldn't tell you how you even got where you're at. <laughs> hmm. Now it won't work at all. Well, what won't? Well, I think I have to close the whole thing. Yeah, out. go ahead. Close the whole thing. Close Thawney or whatever you need to do. Then see if you fix it and then let us back in if, if it doesn't change it. But that's the only thing I could think of is that you named them. The name of the file is the same name as the uh, folder. I'm going to try that to see if it, if, it, if it happens to me. Oh, Brad, you're such a, an experimenter. Yeah, it's still doing it, though. So I don't, I don't think it was the name of the file. Now it's not even printing the menu. Oh, wait a minute. I have the wrong one open here. Oh, that seemed to have done it. Oh, never mind. Did it again. Oh. Hmm. Let us back in, Joe, once. So what did you rename your folder? I just renamed it to program. Okay. But it's still blasting that out. Okay, try the bug again. Try our little bug buddy. Okay. Did anything, hang on, I wanna, can you uh, bring your body or shell up so we can see when it prints that? Bring it up like this. 
Yes. So it hasn't done anything yet. Oh uh, yeah, I'll clear it and restart so it's easier. Do that. There you go. Stop it and then bug it. Okay, nothing there. Okay, so you're nothing there so far. Whoops, right there. It seems to print it as soon as it passes over the import. Yeah, why is that? Once he does his import, da, 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 da. why is it calling that? Oh, I wonder if it's this. You know, it might be that. I bet you that's what it is. Oh, I didn't even see that there. I don't have that. I think I put it there earlier to test it. I think I forgot to delete it. Oh, my God, Joe. Oh, but it, no, but no, um, save falling. Yeah, you really probably quick. save it. Did you save it? Yeah. Should save when you run it. Run it down. Let's go back. Close your shell a minute. And show us your falling speed again. Yeah, okay. so I saw the asterisk um, on the uh, file name or the tab up there where it hasn't been saved. Oh, yet. yeah, I have to save them all of the class. There you go. Now try it. There uh -huh. it goes. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Sorry about that. You're good. No, you just owe us all a couple hours. <laughs> I'm <laughs> kidding. Uh. Anybody else have something interesting for us? You can stop sharing, Joe. Okay, if nobody does, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>